Rick Lord here for Rick Lord TV and Movie Light Photography Behind the Scenes. Welcome to part two of our two-part series on HMIs. I'm here on location helping to produce and light for a short video and still digital photography session for a local church. The production involves an actor playing the part of a Roman soldier preparing for battle. The session is titled Putting on the Armor of God. It's for a program series being played as an intro on the church's large video screens before each Sunday sermon. It was necessary digital images be captured as well. The stills would be used for any subsequent print that promotes the sermon's topic. The property or location chosen for the production sits directly behind the church. It's actually a cattle ranch owned by an adjacent neighbor. As you can see, as I pan the camera around, there are buildings directly to the east, yet there's a great expanse of open territory to the west, making this an ideal place for our small production. Because we'll be using lighting instruments that will require electricity, we'll need an electrical power source. The close proximity to the buildings on the other side of the fence was a plus, as they provided 110 outlets for the lights to be plugged into. There is only one character in the scene, the Roman soldier, so all that will be required is a key light, a chip light, and a little bounce light. For the key light, I'm using the 575 HMI Fresnel, and for the chip light, a 1K tungsten Fresnel. It is also necessary to add a little fill. By placing on the ground a 6x6 sheet of Grifflin directly in front of James, our Roman dude, harsh shadows will be softened by bouncing into him a little of the already present outdoor ambient light. Now, had this been a sunny afternoon, the 575 and the 1K Fresnel would have been useless. It takes a pretty big lighting instruments to compete with the sun. Fortunately, we had our fair share of overcast that day and the 575 and 1K worked out great. Using constant lighting instruments for this scenario was the only way this particular production could have been accomplished. If it were just me with my digital camera, strobes would have worked out just fine. But that wasn't the case. It was planned as both a video and still photo production at the same time. I roughly placed the 575 and 1K in positions I thought would be close to the final frame of composition. At the initial beginnings of the pre-lighting procedure, I placed a 4x4 open frame loaded with quarter stop silk in front of the 575. The silk will soften the harshness of the HMI light beam. However, this step would later prove to be unnecessary. Once James was in wardrobe, he was placed on his mark. I was then able to begin dancing and tweaking the lights into more precise positions that would work best for Chris, the director of photography, and myself. The plastic armor James was wearing created interesting highlights that proved to be more noticeable without the use of the 4x4 quarter stop silk, so it was removed. Because the HMI is daylight balanced, the light would have been a lot bluer than desired for that particular scene. I placed in front of the HMI a pre-cut sheet of brass colored gel. This created warmer gold tone highlights for the painted plastic armor, which helped to make the armor plating look more real and believable. The 1K tungsten Fresnel will act as James' chip light. By placing it three quarters to the rear and pointing back towards his left side, the 1K will play as a perfect chip light with only minor tweaks here and there, hence the flag to block the light from hitting the video camera's lens. Since the color temperature of the 1K is 3200 degrees Kelvin, the natural warm color of the tungsten lamp compared to daylight will work just fine without any additional color temperature correction. It was also necessary to soften the 1K just a bit, so I placed a pre-cut sheet of Opal Frost Diffusion on the front of the barn doors. It proved to be just enough, preventing the light from appearing to be too punchy or contrived. HMI hitting James from the three-quarter front as his key light, and the 1K hitting James from the right rear as his chip, the Roman warrior easily takes shape. Even with the daylight at a minimum with the clouds and evening hours setting in, I was still able to use a shutter speed of a 60th of a second, an aperture of f8, and a film speed of only 100 ISO. You can see by a few of the final images, the overall look was easily achieved. However, it is this, the final image that made the show. Of course, it's been processed six ways to Sunday by also replacing the background with something more from that period. Still the same, to create this, there had to be an original image to work with. That's the art of understanding interesting lighting techniques and how to plan ahead. It doesn't always take a truckload of lighting instruments to create great looking works of art. In fact, many times it comes down to just one or two well-placed lighting instruments to paint a masterful scene. As we're shown in part one of this series, the HMI is a valuable instrument. It's very powerful for its size and amperage draw. Once it's understood how and when the HMI becomes useful, you'll find yourself finding many interesting applications for this type of light. 
I hope this segment answers some of your questions concerning the use of the HMI. If you haven't already, I invite you to watch part one as I show you the nuts and bolts of what makes the HMI tick. Don't forget to check out my book, Movie Light Photography Behind the Scenes at movielightphotography.com. There's much more information on this and many other lighting instruments, techniques, and lighting scenarios.